Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at active note taking. This is something that you would do during a lesson when your teacher is explaining a topic and you need to actively take notes alongside the notes that you've already been provided with. Today we are then going to look at how best to make notes while someone is speaking and give you some helpful hints that you can use every day in class. Now you will have your notes uh, alongside your exam pad or the book that you are going to be taking your notes in and it's critical that you keep these notes up to date throughout the lesson and you want to write down um, key things the teacher is going to say during the lesson. So how to set this up is we would write perhaps the main heading for the day, in this case animal tissue, and we also need to keep track of the date and perhaps the page number that we find this information. Now you're going to have your notes alongside you and that means that you need to be actively taking notes. So as the teacher progresses through the lesson, you need to select out some important and key facts that they are mentioning and you're going to take them down in the form of notes. And these can be in bullet points, they can be in full sentences, whatever suits you and your learning style best is what we suggest. Now, as the lesson progresses, you are going to hear your teacher stressing words and terminology and ideas. And now you need to take these down under the heading that you would have written earlier. And so let's say the teacher is speaking about the four main tissue types. So you jot that down as your key idea. And below that, you can list the key uh, tissue types such as epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and finally, the nervous tissue. Please note that active note taking is not simply just about writing down key words. There must be some kind of logical thought pattern so that when you go back to study these active notes that you've taken alongside the printed note that you've been given, there is some thought process that's gone through it, something that's making it easier for you to understand, and anything that catches your ear um, to help you remember something better, you should make a note of it and write it down in this particular section. Now, as the lesson progresses, we need to be comfortable with adding as many notes as possible. And these can be things like bullet points, where you have a few little sentences jotted down, or it can be keywords. So if we moved into the next paragraph, for example, the teacher now is describing epithelial tissue. And they go on to say things like the epithelial tissue lines body surfaces and cavities, as well as it forms glands. The cells of the tissues are closely connected to each other, via cellular junctions and because epithelium is found on the edges of organs, it also has two distinct surfaces. Now let's say the teacher is explaining this idea and they come up with a really great metaphor or something that you hadn't thought of before as a way to remember it. Now in your handwritten note that you're taking, perhaps you write NB in the margin and you write out the um, metaphor or even the study tip from your teacher to remember that the epithelial tissues line the body. It's important to use as much color as possible and as many different small indications that you have included new notes. So boxes, clouds, circles, stars, anything that makes your notes a little bit more eye-catching and a little bit more memorable. Now, it's important to note that making a summary is very different to active note taking. Active note taking is something that you do during the lesson where you hear snippets of information that are vital for you to remember things that you learned in class. But making a summary essentially means that you're going to go back to work that you've already done, and now you're going to create a study note, or you're going to go over the work and select things that perhaps you've missed. Now I'm going to use the notes that I used in the previous slide about animal tissues and these are the steps that you should take when you're making a summary. Remember these are the notes or the textbook notes that you've been given and these are not the active notes that you have.
First of all, you are going to read your notes and you're only going to read them. You're not going to highlight them the first time round. And the reason for that is often people get caught up in highlighting and reading at the same time. And it's important just to allow yourself to read it once through. Once you've read it, then you should go back and you need to highlight. And what you're highlighting are key concepts. Now, in this paragraph, as you can see, these notes have been created with bolded words already, which in and itself is already a clue to you as the student that the teacher wants you to take note of these specific um, ideas. However, it's really important to note that just because the teacher has highlighted these few words doesn't mean that that's the only information that you need. And so, for example, if we were to highlight this, when we take the paragraph about the um, epithelial tissue, if we were to highlight it, it would look like something like this. So, the epi epithelial tissues line the body surfaces and cavities. This tells us where we find them and we also find them in the form of glands. The cells of the tissues are closely connected to each other via cellular junctions and because epithelium is found on the edges of organs, this is telling us also where we find them, it has two distinct surfaces. It has the apical surface which is exposed to the body cavity we want to highlight that, while the basal surface is adjacent to the underlying tissue. And they have given you a figure below so that you can see this apical on the surface and basal on the bottom. It says that epithelia contain no blood vessels. In other words, they are non-vascular and they are dependent on the underlying connective tissues for nutrients. Now, this is what your notes should look like once you've highlighted them. All these key factors you can cross-reference with the active notes you took in your actual lesson time. Now, once you have finished highlighting your section. It's important now to take that highlighted section and you now need to convert that into a written note. So now we need to write the summary. Now the summary that you write needs to reflect the kind of work you are working with and there is more than one kind of summary that you can use. It's important to select the right one to reflect the content that you have covered. Now, you could use something like this, which is a flow diagram, and there's more than one animal tissue listed on here, but if I just point out some important things, you can see here that we have the main heading up here, which is animal tissues, and then coming down from here is muscle tissue, connective tissue, and what we just spoke about in the previous slide, epithelial tissue, and that's our subheading. And that can then branch down into the glandular, the unilayer, and multilayer. And then it can go into the different types, as you can see, if we go a little bit further. And you'll notice, though, that it's not just words. It's really important to include some key features. For example, squamous epithelium is thin, flat, forming delicate linings of blood vessels, alveoli, and lungs, the mouth, and the esophagus. And this is a lovely way to take a really large piece of information and condense it and have all the key facts and all the key structures in one place at one time. Now, this is one kind of flow diagram. There is a second kind that you can use for processes. Now, this next flow diagram is a diagram that we use particularly for a process. Now, processes are where we go from point A to point B. In other words, how do we get the air that we breathe in into the blood capillaries? And so what these flow diagrams do is they show us how we go from point A to point B. And in this instance, we are using keywords that describe the structures such as pharynx and larynx. And we use some words on our arrows or above them to show the connection between breathing in and getting to the pharynx and the larynx. For example, we breathe in, the air enters via our nose or our mouth and it travels to the pharynx and larynx. 
then primary filtration is done and it enters into the trachea and so what we've done here is essentially we've included what is happening along each airway what is each process occurring and how does it then result in the next structure in this process Now flow diagrams are perfect for looking at particularly homeostasis, um, nervous system functions, and endocrine functions, and how those are carried out within the body. The next way that we can summarize our information is in a mind map. And this particular mind map here has the animal tissues and we've broken them down into smaller subsec subsections such as the nervous tissue, muscular tissue, connective and epithelial tissues. And they have used images in here. And I encourage you to do the same if this is how you would like to order your work. You have a mixture between pictures and words, and this just allows you to visualize what you're actually learning. It's really important that when you make a mind map, your mind map is what you envision. It is your mind and how you are remembering something. Mind maps are also really great for large chunks of information that you want to collate and keep on one page. Particularly, this is something that you might want to do at the very end of a section. The last and final way that you can summarize information from your notes is in the form of a table. Now, tables are perfect for comparisons. And in this example, I am comparing microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And what we have done here in order to organize our work successfully is we have some subheadings in the table, for example, treatment, can antibiotics work, do vaccines exist, and some examples of these organisms. And then we've filled in the table regarding each of these groups. And this is great for comparison, especially when you have to remember the differences between different microorganisms, different animal groups, different animal tissues, and there are so many applications that tables can be used for. And yet again, it's the perfect way to take a large amount of information and condense it into one page of notes. Now that you know how to actively make a note during the lesson, as well as what to do with your actual note pack, and how to summarize, these three things will allow you to function at your highest when you're working on your own at home or when you're in class. It's important to be active and present throughout the whole lesson. And the point of active note making is that you fully engage with your work.